moving into today's session on the bottom left, as you can see, uh, the handsome right man, handsome young man over there is Terence Yeo. He was uh, one of our panelists that day uh, and he gave a very informative session. So uh, Terence comes from a developer's uh, background initially and then moved into an agency perspective with the big hopes and dreams of being a developer one day. So this gentleman has scaled up uh, his business very fast, moving from a negotiator and now he's playing the role of a principal to make sure that all uh, 200 plus agents under him are all producing. Okay. So today he will be running through the topic of land titles, everything and anything that you need to know. If there's anything missed out, how, how would you know? Please ask the question. Okay. So, uh, before we pass it off to Terence, can we just test Terence with your mic? Testing. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, fantastic. So, okay, if everyone is ready, excited, ready to go, your mood is up, our moods are up as well, can you please type in a number five for Mr. Terence? Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, everyone. Beautiful crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Flood. Flood. Keep on flooding like this. Fantastic. Okay. And then there's a bottom reaction button. Let's give him a thumbs up or warm, warm round of applause. Let's pump Terence up as well. Terence, everybody is very excited. Everybody is ready for you. Please take it away. Okay. Thank you, Kai, for the wonderful introduction. So um, I hope that you guys have a good session. Uh, oh, sorry. A good Good week also for the first MCO. All right. Uh, everyone are staying safe and eager to learn. Lah. Okay. Before this, uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Uh, small technical error, if you don't mind me. Because my screen, I think my laptop is also too excited for this. Hold on. Let me share my screen. All right. Okay, everyone can see my slides here, yeah? all good. Okay, uh, today I will be sharing about uh, land titles. Okay, many of you would think uh, land title is about freehold, leasehold, maybe strata title, maybe you heard of, but is that all? Actually, uh, when it comes to land title, is that includes of a lot of things where maybe a, mat a metro uh, real estate negotiator may have missed out as well. So today I will go with uh, very basic to something more advanced. And those who are very experienced in this, maybe uh, you can have some takeaway as well at the end of the session. All right. So let's kickstart our training session today. So important question, especially for new negotiator. Okay. Maybe you just join the industry. What is land title? Yeah, these are very important questions. Uh, and and some, some clients would ask you, what is land title? What is the title? Title, maybe some new agents understanding that, oh, this is a residential title, or this is commercial title. But what exactly it is? Okay, um, imagine that a person when is born is given a birth certificate. So the birth certificate have Many of your information, your name, la, your address, la, what time you have, uh, you are born and stuff like that. So same thing to property, all right? Every property has its own certificate, all right? So um, the de definition would be a land title that is issued to an individual or entity. When you say, it mentioned entity means a company can buy property as well under the company name, all right? That's whole uh, legal uh, ownership of the land. So we have a clear understanding first before we advance further. Okay, basically a land title uh, is a certificate uh, that proves the ownership of the property. Okay, and key note here is that uh, all the land matters is governed by the Na uh, National Land Code 1965. Okay, that is very important. And also bear in mind that uh, land matters are controlled by the state government. So different states have different uh, uh, requirements or different condition when it comes to land matters. 
Okay, when we want to talk about JB uh, requirement for certain land or compared to Selengo, it will be different. Okay, so have that in mind. So I have actually break down land title into four tiers so that uh, as a new agent or uh, experienced agent also, you have a better, easier understanding. Okay, first of all, uh, we look into master title. Master title is the tip of the pyramid whereby this is the beginning lah, where all the titles uh, started off. Okay, uh, what is master title? Master title uh, is whereby the developer, when they want to develop this project or this property development or township, they have already have a title in a big piece of land. Okay, after that, when the building is completed, it will be subdivided into either individual title or strata title. Okay, I will go a little bit further later. Okay, imagine this, uh, uh, you have a piece of cake, okay? One piece of cake. So this piece of cake, imagine this is a developer. So it's uh, one title. So this cake has its own certificate also. However, when the development is completed, when during VP time, the developer is responsible to subdivide, meaning to cut into pieces and distribute each pieces to the buyer or the homeowner. And this will have their own certificate. Okay, this is a concept, but uh, that is what it means. Uh. Okay, after individual title or strata title, we will have another tier of breakdown. It will be whether this is freehold or leasehold and also Malay reserve land. I'll come to that in details later. And last but not least, when it, that is an uh, individual title, strata title, free hole, list hole, then it breaks into whether this is a boomy lot or non boomy lot. Okay, I hope this is clear. This place, uh, you can imagine how the titles breakdown is. Okay, let's go to the first tier first. Okay, the tip of the tier. So uh, we, I do a comparison of a master title and individual title or strata title. First of all, who is the owner for master title and who is the owner for individual or strata title? Okay, master title, the, de the developer is the owner of master title. Okay, this, this title is yet break into strata or individual title. And how to prove the ownership is based on the launch of the deed of assignment. We call it DOA. I'm sure uh, experienced agents here may have already heard of this name, uh, this, this document's name called deed of assignment. It's a document that has to be signed by the purchaser uh, during SPA time, okay? Rather than uh, signing, uh, I mean, when it comes to transfer, when, when we have individual title or strata title, that is something that we call a memorandum of transfer, MOT. All right. However, in master title, you have to sign these things called a uh, deed of assignment. So it proves the rights of the ownerships. And it means that the developer has transferred the rights to the uh, purchaser or the homeowner. Okay. Whereas for individual title or strata title, the purchaser, it, it already has their own certificate on its own name. So if today this property is individual title or strata title already come out, right? So uh, you will see your name uh, in the title. Whereas if this property is still under master title, uh, you won't get any title at all, okay? It's a title that holds by the developer. So to prove ownerships, right? Uh, there will be uh, this document called memorandum of transfer that changed of the ownership, okay? Right, so second, how to, how to keep track uh, whether this owners, uh, uh, who is the ownership and the responsibility and rights of this master title property. So just now like I mentioned, when during SMP time, SPA has to be signed and also deed of assignment. So meaning when we, trans, uh, when we purchase a master title property or your client purchase master title property, right? Make sure that your owner have a chain of SPA and DOA in place, meaning if the owner is the third or fourth owner of this property, make sure that he has the principal SPA, meaning the first SPA, the second owner's SPA, third owner SPA, 
until his own owner SPA and DOA in place. Otherwise, the transfer will, uh, will be a bit complicated. Lah. So uh, hence why uh, when we do uh, faster title property transaction, uh, it's a bit tricky and uh, there's a lot of uh, traps an agent should be aware of. Lah. Okay, whereas for individual title or strata title, the name of the property is already, uh, the name of the owners, their IC, the address is all already inside the certificate. Later, I will show you an example of uh, how uh, titles look like, okay? And then the, lastly, when it comes to financing, master title uh, is a bit tricky because if the property is more than 10 years already, but still under master title, then uh, when it comes to bank loan, right, it's very difficult to get loan one, okay? So uh, since that uh, there's 187 negotiators here, um, those who are experienced, can you share like which bank can finance a master title property that is more than 10 years? All right. So hopefully this session is more interactive, get some feedbacks. Anyone know? Uh, if this property is master title by more than 10 years already, which bank can finance? Any answer? Oh, a few. Okay, public bank is the most common one. CUMB, there's no CUMB, CIMB, Hong Leong. Okay, the most common bank that can finance a master title more than 10 years, right, uh, is public bank. Okay, but however, it's also subject to whether the developer is still around or not. Okay, uh, some cases they may not take, but uh, in general, master title that's more than 10 years, right? Public bank will take or uh, will, will, will be able to finance and uh, maybe other Islamic bank as well. As far as my concern, like Stand Chart, uh, Hong Leong Bank, uh, they cannot finance a master title that is more than 10 years. Okay, master title that is less than 10 years, yes, as many, many banks still can finance, but more than 10 years, right? As far as my understanding, uh, public bank and other Islamic bank. Lah. Okay, all right. For, for individual or strata title property, there's no issue on financing. So as a real estate negotiator, you have to be very uh, alert lah, whether this property, although it's master title, but whether... Uh, it's already more than 10 years or not, this building, okay, right? So what is individual title and what is strata title? I'm sure some of the agents here may not know what is the difference, okay? Let me go straight to the answer. So individual titles right, are uh, all for the landed property, okay? Landed properties are all individual title. Whereas strata title are for high rises like condominiums and apartment. However, however, there's an exception. Okay, I'm sure that some of you guys know um, there's a landed strata title in Malaysia and it's getting more and more common. Okay, the most famous landed strata title property, who knows where it is? Actually, I've shared this many times. Uh, one of the Yes, I, I saw Eco World, Desa Park, correct? Desa Park is the early uh, strata landed in Klang Valley. And also lately you see Eco World, yes, uh, building strata. And more and more developers will follow the trend as well. Okay. There's pro and cons for uh, strata title property. Of course, uh, the cons will be obviously is the maintenance. Lah. For strata landed, also they have to pay the maintenance and sinking fund. Whereas uh, individual, if it, even if it's gated, guarded, right, you just pay security fee, okay? Or even small minimal amount of maintenance if there is. So however strata, you can see that the buildings are more uniform, all are, all are the same. And uh, the JMB, the management don't allow extension or change of facade for strata property. Okay, that's the difference. However, it really depends on the request. Lah. I've seen some strata landed, they actually allow the owners to do minimal extension, but uh, in general, uh, strata, strata title property are not, to, not allowed to change the facade. Lah. Okay, right. 
So we have uh, go through the master title and also individual and strata title. Let's go to freehold and leasehold. What is freehold and leasehold? Okay, do you know enough of what is freehold and leasehold? But before I go to that, maybe, um, maybe let's do a quick survey. Uh, whether you are uh, the current property that you are currently staying, is it freehold or leasehold? If freehold, press one, leasehold, press two. The current property that you are staying. Because later on, I will share if you are in leasehold property, how much premium you have to pay if you are going to extend your lease, leasehold. Number one is freehold, number two is leasehold. Okay, quite a lot of people staying in freehold, huh, apparently. Okay, now, so what is the difference, freehold and leasehold? Now, let's do a comparison, freehold and leasehold. Okay, first, for freehold property, we know that the land belongs to the owner, lah, all right? Uh, whereas leasehold, we all know it's 99 years law. Commonly, we know it's 99 years law. Whereas for leasehold property, the land belongs to the state. Just now I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, all lands matters uh, refer back to the state. Okay, state government is controlling it. And uh, commonly, what we have seen is leasehold is 99 years. Okay, however, some places has more than 99 years, 999 years. It's almost as good as freehold already. Okay, you, I think this one I um, haven't seen in Klang Valley. However, my brother actually bought a property in JB uh, last time. He bought it a leasehold 999 years. This is by uh, experience. Uh, and also some property may have lesser lease year. Okay, maybe 60 years or 30 years also have, but commonly what we have seen uh, in Klang Valley mostly are nine, 99 years. Lah. Right, so uh, for freehold, the land landowner is the purchaser himself. Lah. So for freehold property, the ownership is infinite, means infinite means what? Forever, right? However, for leasehold property, at the end of the lease, right, uh, the owner will have to pay a premium in order to extend the lease. Okay. But is it true that uh, freehold, it's, the ownership is infinite? So it says that the governments want to take back the property, can or not? Can or not? Yes or no? Can, yes, correct. Actually, even today, uh, if it says that you are staying in freehold property, if government want to take back, also can. Of course, uh, with a compensation. Uh, because sometimes the, uh, the government may want to build infrastructure, like for example, highway, or uh, LRT stations, MRT stations, all this, they can, they can uh, take back. And of course, as a, with the compensation. Lah. So freehold is not really infinite lah, in that sense. Okay. However, people will think a freehold is better than leasehold. There's always this big debate. Okay, freehold is better than leasehold or this leasehold is actually not that bad. So it really depends on uh, the person's uh, interpretation and understanding. Lah. I would say it's the, about the same because for leasehold property, the cons, uh, of course, have to pay premium law. However, in general, leasehold property, if compare apple to apple with freehold, right, is actually uh, leasehold property is cheaper than freehold. Apple to apple comparison now. Okay, so when it comes to freehold property, does it require a consent to transfer? The answer is no. Huh? For freehold, we don't need to get a state consent to transfer ownership. Whereas leasehold, you need a uh, state consent to transfer ownership. Meaning today as a uh, purchaser, I buy a leasehold property, the lawyer will have to get the state consent from the land office in order for the transfer to happen. But it also, for freehold property, uh, it also has a freehold, but you need to get a consent. Later, I will show you an example. I've done this case before. And I'm sure that some of you have came across uh, the one that I transacted freehold with consent, consent is in Cyber Jaya. And I have also heard that Kalana Jaya, certain areas freehold also need to get consent. All right. So for freehold property, when it comes to mortgage loan, no, no issue. Okay. However, for leasehold, if the property uh, lease is less than 30 years already, 
okay, the lease year is getting lesser, 30 years or less, most of the bank, they don't finance the property. Lah. And what normally as a real estate negotiator we can do, uh, we can advise the owners to extend it by paying premium. Lah. Okay, right. Interestingly, I'm sure that some of you are staying in this whole property and uh, own the property and you may not know hey, how much I need to pay uh, when the lease comes to the end. What is the premium I have to, have to pay? So uh, just uh, may I highlight again, each, uh, each state, right, the calculation of lease extension premium is different. So today I'm going to share Selangor and KL, all right? And this is for residential property. A commercial will have a different calculation, but very similar. Uh, now the example that I'm going to share with you are residential. Okay, for Selengo, good news, you guys, good news, have two options. The first options would be, uh, you have to pay 1,000 only to renew the lease uh, with the state, uh, state uh, land office, okay? So what happened is that the state authority, right, they will lodge a caveat on this property and you cannot sell the property. But it's good what if your decision, if the owner decision is to uh, continue staying, not thinking of disposal, this is a very uh, feasible options and it's very uh, cost effective, I would say, put it this way. All right. However, it says that the owner decided to, uh, to dispose later after he extend this 1000 lease, right? He continues to stay, stay, stay. And then later he wants to dispose, right? He have to pay back the premium law. So for Slango now, uh, to pay the premium, uh, they are giving 30% discount. So good news for Slango residents. Okay, now I'm going to share the formula for uh, the lease whole premium calculation. So what's the formula here? So the formula is one over four times one over 100 times the value of the land by square feet. Uh, times the terms, uh, new lease minus an existing lease, meaning how many years you want to uh, release. Okay, for example, now is uh, 50 years, you want to re uh, extend to back to 99 years. So you need to uh, extend another 49 years, law, correct? And also what is the land size? Okay, i give you an example. Uh, example, Bangsa Baiduri in Subang Jaya, if anyone of you know is this whole, uh, this whole housing area. Okay, so I give you an example. It says that the land area is uh, 20 by 80 lah, landed property lah, this one, 1,600 square feet. Market value 200 per square feet, the land, land value. Uh, who determine this value? Who determine this uh, land value? Actually, it's by JPPH. Uh. So JPPH will determine this land value, not by agents, not by lawyer, but the uh, 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 management board, uh, sorry, the, the uh, Jambatan Penilayan uh, JPPH. And the uh, remaining years, uh, for example, 69 years, want to re renew back to 99 years, correct? So this will be the formula 0 0.25 times 0 0.01 times it says that the value of the land at that time is 200 times 30 years times 1,600, which is the land size 20 by 80, mark, correct? So uh, to renew, to pay the premium is 26,400, okay? And of course, just like I mentioned, uh, why we take 0 0.7 is because 30% discount on the premium for Selangor residents. So the total premium that the owner have to pay is 18,480, it's cheaper, okay? It's quite cheap. However, if the land size is huge, uh, imagine how much would it cost? If it is a bungalow, uh, how much would it cost already? So yeah, so that's a, a downside lah for leasehold property, okay? However, just now I mentioned, uh, freehold property are generally priced a little bit higher compared to leasehold, okay, in absolute number, right? So comes to Kuala Lumpur, okay? Kuala Lumpur, for the premium, how much the premium have to pay? Actually, the difference is very minimal. However, for Kuala Lumpur, there's no 30% uh, discount lah, okay? Right, so I also use a, a apple to apple comparison. Uh, we use Taman Maluri in Cheras, which is also a leasehold area, 20 by 80. Market value, look at the same, 200. Remaining years, also 69 years. So you can see that the differences are, is very minimal only compared to Selangor. Okay, sorry, I, uh, okay. 
you can see that uh, if paying full premium for Selengo is 26,400, whereas for KL, Kuala Lumpur, the full premium is 26,664, very, very minimal different. So this is a uh, highlight again, this is for residential property, whereas for commercial will be different calculation. Okay. So let's move on to Malay Reserve Land and Bumi Lot. Is there a difference when it comes to Malay Reserve Land and Bumi Lot? Yes, there is a difference. Okay. How to identify whether this is Malay Reserve Land uh, property? We can always refer back to the title. Okay. Later, I will give an example of a title, how it looks like. Right. So what is the definition of Malay Reserve Land? First thing, Malay Reserve Land, uh, there's two objectives that are stated. First is, the, uh, is to prevent state land in Malay Reserve being disposed to any means to non-Malay. Basically, this is a, a Malay privilege, uh, okay? And then second is uh, prevent any private dealing between Malays and non-Malay in terms of Malay holdings or Malay Reserve land. So uh, one key thing here is that maybe generally Malay Reserve land, uh, uh, the price is cheaper compared to uh, non-Malay Reserve land, okay? Of course, some... Uh, buyer, or maybe you yourself will be thinking, hey, why not I, uh, I form a company and I use it as a, a, with, with the power of autonomy or something like that can transfer the rights or whatnot. Lah. However, this uh, cannot be done one. Lah. Okay, based on the rulings, this cannot be done. Whatever this kind of contract happen, uh, it will deem uh, now and void. Okay, so unlike Bumi Lots, right? Malay reserve land has to be owned by Malay and cannot be transferred, sold, or leased to a non-Malay. Okay, so uh, as my understanding, Malay reserve land, uh, even you are a uh, Bumi Putra, like for example, you are Iban or Kadazan, cannot uh, own Malay reserve land. Okay, it's purely for Malay. So for Bumi lot, Bumi lot is different. Bumi lot is open for sale or lease to Bumi Putra only, which includes of Malay, Sabahan, Sarakian, and non-Malay Muslim. Okay, uh, that's a quite a significant difference. Okay, and also state authority has full control of all land matters. Hence why if you are doing, even today you are doing project, you will heard of this, oh, there's a Bumi quota for this uh, condominium must allocate to the Bumi lots. So every states have a different allocation. Uh, for example, in Klang Valley, must allocate 30% of the units to Bumi lot. Okay, and Bumi lot to sell to non Bumi can transfer or not. I heard a uh, different, different uh, answer, whether a Bumi lot can transfer to non Bumi lot or not. The answer is yes. Okay, freehold Bumi lot to non Bumi lot, no problem. Leasehold uh, Bumi lot to non Bumi also can. However, uh, Bumi lot to non Bumi lot, especially for leasehold, definitely for leasehold, it will take more time uh, in years, lah, maybe, one or two years to successfully transfer because uh, the first two attempts are most of the time will be rejected by the land office. They don't allow this kind of transfer, uh, but it can be done, okay? So uh, if today as a real estate negotiator, if the, your buyer really interested, why not? Okay, it can be done, but it takes some time. So my personally, my preference would be, I would recommend non Bumi lot lah to save the trouble. Okay, and maybe my commission, if I uh, insist on this, maybe it will, my commission will come in later and also time requirements and all these things have to take into consideration, right? So, okay, let's move to a sample, okay? Probably this is the first time you have seen this. Can anyone uh, type number three, uh, saying that this is your first time seeing a land title? Oh, everyone seen the land title before? Ah? First time, okay, your guess. First time seeing this land title. Okay, I'm sure that there's uh, people that is first time seeing this land title. Okay, uh, let me turn on the highlight. Okay. Right, never mind. Um, yeah, okay, let's look into the land title here on the first page on your left hand side. Okay, we start from left to the right. First page first. Okay, you can see the first thing on the top of the title, which is Hat Millet Sementara. 
What is heart relate samantara? Later, I will come to that. People's first understanding of heart relate samantara is least whole, which is wrong. Okay, heart relate samantara, samantara is not least whole. Ah. Okay, so don't confuse on that. Later, I will go to that shortly, but keep that in mind first. And then you can see the word HSD on the left-hand side. Okay, you can see also cukai tahunan, meaning how much is the uh, cukai uh, tanah. Okay, the, the cukai tanah is mentioned. And also the state, daerah, mungkim, all this is stated. The lot number is stated also. Okay, what important for a real estate negotiator here is the loss of sementara. Because this is Hamile Sementara, so loss sementara uh, is mentioned here. What important is that you can see that, oh, it mentions the size of the property. If the, today this is a condominium, it will show that the, uh, the size of the build up. Okay, if this is a landed property, it will show the land size here. Okay, so in this case, uh, it is a landed property. So uh, the land size is mentioned 143 uh, square meter. Okay, as a negotiator, uh, we have to convert it to square feet lah, because most of the time when we tell our clients is using square feet rather than square meter. Okay, and then category pengguna tanah, you can see is bangunan. Okay, at the bottom here, at the bottom here, you can see that it mentions bangunan kediaman, meaning for residential purpose. If it is for commercial purpose, it will mention uh, bangunan per niagaan. Okay, clear? All right, and then how to identify whether this is a leasehold or freehold? Here, you can see this is a leasehold uh, property because it says that pajakan selama tempo 99 tahun berakhir pada 18 March 2096. Means it, the lease will end in 2096. Okay, so how many years left? 75 years left, correct. Okay, so it's 75 years left lah, for this property. Okay, for leasehold property, uh, very important, or even freehold, uh, please, uh, please take note of the last thing, sekatan-sekatan kepentingan. Can you see that? Sekatan-sekatan kepentingan at the bottom of the page. We are looking still at the left-hand page, uh, the first page, uh, look at the bottom. All right, sekatan-sekatan kepentingan. What do you mention? Tanah yang diberi milik tidak boleh dipindah milik, dipajak dan digadai melainkan kepada kebenaran pihak berkuasa negeri. Meaning uh, to transfer, okay, to lease uh, and to charge, okay, has to get the approval from the state, uh, state government, state authority. Okay, so meaning you need to get the consent lah. So later I will show an example, freehold also come across this lah. Okay, besides this ah. Uh, we go to the second page on the right hand side. Record ketuan punyaan. What does this mean? This means that who is the owner of this property? What we'll show here is that their name, I have already crossed out, but it will show their name, their IC, and their current residential uh, address. Okay, it says that this property has two owners, two owners' names will be reflected. Three owners, three owners' name will be reflected here. So, it's very important as a real estate negotiator, when we go for listing appointment, ask from the owner, get a copy of title from the owner during your listings appointment. Uh, not at the end of the transaction when you collect bookings. Uh, okay, because sometimes that you may not know, actually this property has more than one owner. Although the person who contacted you is the owner of the property, but there is also other owners behind it. You, you are not aware. So best, best thing is to get the title, ask a copy of the title from the owner during your listings appointment. Okay. All right. So uh, lastly, you can see that record urusan, meaning where uh, whether this, this property is charged to the bank or not. As you can see, this property still got loan and is charged to Maybank Islamic. Okay. So it's stated here also. So it says that record urusan, there's nothing in record urusan, meaning the uh, owner is already uh, finished pay off their loan already. So they have already discharged from the bank. So when there's a discharge from the bank, a new title will be issued to the owner and record urusan will be empty. There's nothing there. So just to share my experience, uh, uh, 
a lot of agents, right, uh, when they transact deal, they did not ask a copy of even SMP or title from the owner during the listing, listing time. Okay, just to share my own experience because I came across this and I hope that uh, as a negotiator, you don't uh, repeat the same mistake that I did. Okay, uh, just to share with you, three years back, I actually sold, sold a property in Seri Kembangan. So as many agents do, I uh, get information from the owner without verifying it. So what happened was um, booking, booking form was signed, earnest deposit was collected, and later find out the square feet that is provided by the owner does not tally with the uh, title, okay? Uh, SMP is not tally. Actually, it's smaller than what I was told. So, of course, as a buyer, really, I can school uh, front back. Uh. So, uh, however, at the end, I still managed to convince my buyer. Uh, but this is uh, one big uh, lesson that I've learned that I need to verify uh, the square feet and other stuff uh, from the owner before I start marketing it. So especially if you today uh, you are doing uh, corner houses, corner house or bungalows or semi these that the land size may be different. Okay, all these numbers have to be exact. Don't give a aga aga number because if we give a aga aga number, right, later we will get into trouble. If more, then but as a buyer happy lah, but as an owner, he may not be happy. Or if less lesser than what is informed then as a buyer, of course, will be very angry. So try to get this information uh, before we start marketing it, okay? Especially you are closing big deals, uh, factories, commercials, bungalow lots, corner lots. All this must be, be careful. Sometimes, yes, uh, if you are doing condo, you, you may oversee this lah, because condo medium, the sizes uh, will be the same. Lah. However, uh, especially for those landed one, I would highly recommend or advise you to get a copy of title from the owner or SMP. If there's no title, then get SMP. Okay, one question here, since uh, some experienced negotiator here, one question, um, which one is more accurate, SMP or title? Okay, if there is SMP, there's a title, which one provides a better, uh, more accurate information? Correct, title, title. So if today uh, you know that this property has SMP, there's a title already, always ask for the title. Lah. Okay, because for loan, loan application also, banks will ask for title rather than SMP unless it's master title. Master title bank uh, will ask for SMP, that is fine. But if already got the title, uh, best we can get the title. Okay, now a freehold title with consent. Hey, you ask, hey, Terence, hey, why, how come this title looks very different? So uh, this is the real transaction that I transact uh, many years ago. Uh, this is the old format of a title. Uh, interestingly, uh, new, this is a newer format. I think there's also an updated format also, but this is a newer one. This is an older version of a title, how it looks like. Uh, you can notice that uh, here, because it's a freehold, it's stated here. Geran untuk selama lamanya. So understanding this is a freehold property lah. And then you can see at the bottom here, nyata nyata, a syarat syarat nyata. It shows that it's a peniagaan, meaning it's a commercial title uh, property. And then lastly, you can see tanah ini tidak boleh dipajak, dipindah milik dan digadai melain dengan kebenaran pihak berkuasa negeri. Okay. So you can see that this property uh, needs to get the consent, although it is not leasehold, okay? So uh, important for you guys, if the owners of the buyer or whoever tell you this property, a uh, freehold need consent, how to identify or verify that is to look at the title because it will mention that. All right, I go a little bit faster. All right, so just like I mentioned, Hat Mile Samantara and Garam. So Geran has a lot of Geran. Ah. Hat Mile Sementara, what is the difference? Hat Mile Sementara, uh, in English, we call it a qualified title, meaning the title is not finalized yet. 
the area may have difference. It's a provisional area and may be slightly different after a final survey has been carried out. So qualified title is issued before the final title. So how to identify whether this is a qualified title or a final title? For qualified title, you can see at the top of the title, it's mentioned Hamid Lake Sementara, and it will have a difference HSD and HSM. Okay, D stands for Daera, M stands for Mungkim. Okay, I go back to, I go back to this one. Okay, you can see that uh, on the first page on the left hand side at the top, it mentioned Hamid Lake Sementara, meaning this is a qualified title, it's not a final title, meaning this property is deemed yet to conduct a final survey, okay, right? If the property or the land is already done the final survey, the land office will reissue a title under the title of Geran, Geran Mungkim, Pajakan Negeri or Pajakan Mungkim. So when you see this name, means that the final survey is already done. The area, the land area is already finalized. Okay, so what would be the difference? Hey, today, if the owner has half million, half million sementara, can I sell this property or not? The answer here is can. So half million sementara, uh, uh, final title, qualified title, can be transferred, can be leased, can be charged, no issue. However, if today we are talking about this piece of land, want to subdivide, want to partition, want to amalgamate, okay, so all this, have to get the final title first, okay? So for those who uh, do commercial, industrial, uh, make sure uh, it's final title lah because the differences may be significant, okay? Right, so I hope that I clarified this one. Right, next, land search. Okay, one is land search, important or not? Whether to do land search on the property. Okay, where, when to conduct, conduct land search? Okay, let's go to the first question first. What is land search? Basically, land search is a, is a search done at the land office to find out the information of the property and to verify it. Okay, so uh, this can be done in uh, land office. Lah. Okay, I'm sure that those experienced negotiators have done it before. Uh, those that focus in commercial industrial land, um, you should have done it before. You have done your own search at the land office. So later I will show you an example, how a land search, the outcome, the, the, the information extracted. Okay, so when to do land search? Uh, later I'll come to that. Why do you need to conduct a land search? Is to verify the information provided by the vendor is accurate. Because sometimes when we get the title from the owners, right? It can be the title can be released many, many years ago, 10, 20 years ago. And then you realize, oh, maybe there's a change of, in, add on names already or whatnot. So maybe the owner did not give gave you an updated one, maybe a previous version one. So by conducting land search, we can get updated information and verify uh, the information with the information provided from the vendor. Okay, that is very important, especially when you are doing a big ticket deal. Okay, and also have to make sure that the property is free from encumbrances. What is encumbrances? meaning is free from any charge caveat, lah, private caveat especially, okay, that will stop or, or prohibits the transfer of the title. So that's very important to do a land search. So normally, uh, when the, before the SMP sign, uh, when the loan approved, but before SMP sign, the lawyer has the duty or the obligation to conduct a land search first. Okay, make sure everything is in order. There's no caveat on this property. Okay, so yeah. So when it comes to land search, right, there's two types of land search. One is private search, one is official search. What's the difference? Private search are cheaper. Uh, all the information you need is already there. The only difference between private search and official search is that uh, officer, official search is stamped by the registrar and signed by the officer whereby private search is not, okay? So uh, when you do transfer, the, the lawyer will get the officer search uh, in order to get the consent from the state government. Okay, so what do you need to conduct a land search? 
three things you need. The title number, the lot number, and the information of Banda Pekan, Mukin, and State. So all this information can get it from your title, uh, the land title from the owner. Lah. Okay, the lot numbers is there, the plot number is there. Okay, the title number, which is the, in this case will be the HSD, lah, the title number. And then number PT is the lot number. Okay, so all these number need to, we need to collect first in order to conduct the land search. Okay, now I will show you example of a search when uh, you yourself or lawyer done the search, this, will, this is what you are getting, okay? Uh, the information you got, right, will be very similar to uh, the title. Basically, this one is updated one. You can cross-check, okay, to verify whether there's any changes or not. Whether uh, you can also see, as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, it shows that this is a freehold. This is the latest one. I got it from the lawyer. Okay, uh, you can see the kaluasan. Okay, how big is the property? All right, you can see that the tariff pegangan is selamas lamanya, meaning this is a freehold property. How much is, is the cukai tanah, meaning your quick rent? Every year, uh, as a property owner, you have to pay quick rent, right? How much have to pay? This is also stated here, right? And the usage of the building is for kediaman, meaning for residential, okay? Uh, as you can see also record ketuan punyaan, meaning who is the owner. In this case, there's two owners here, okay? And also the, the history of the property. So as you can see, the first caveat was done in 2015 by public bank. So because uh, the owner of the property took loan, right? So it was charged to public bank at that time, okay? And you can see that there's a transfer happens. And then on the right-hand side, on the page number two, you can see that uh, in 2016, there's another caveat done, which is the transfer happened. Lah. Okay. And uh, the first owner transferred to the second owner. And, and you can see 2016 here. Uh, it happens that, uh, sorry, not 2016, 2021 just happens two months ago, March, is charged to Public Islamic Bank, okay? So two, two uh, caveat here. One is from the previous owner, uh, one is the new buyer. All right, so these are the information you can get from the uh, search, all right? If you have any question, can put it in the chat, right? So I've already done title. If you have any question, can put it in the chat, but this is additional tips for those who are uh, in sub-sale. Uh, since that we talk about consent already, uh, and I would like to touch a little bit on low cost here. So when it comes to low cost property, what is low cost property? Because low cost property, right, we cannot really identify from the outside of the property one, you know. Some property we thought is low cost, but it is not. Some property we thought is not low cost, but it is low cost. So this is a bit tricky. Lah. So some of you may aware. And then low cost doesn't mean cheap. Ah. Some, when I first started in this industry, I thought, oh, low cost property means cheap property. Lah. No, basically there's certain property that falls under the category of low cost category. So uh, what is the important thing when it comes to low cost property, meaning when a purchaser want to buy low cost property, there is certain requirement need to meet. Okay, what are the requirements to buy a low cost property in Selangor? Okay, different states have different requirements. So in this case, I'll mention more on Selangor. I'm sure most of you are focused in Selangor. First thing first, it has to be Malaysian and minimum age of 18 and above and resides in Selangor. Second, the property must be at least five years from the date of SPA before the owner can sell to other. So today, if you got a low cost listings, you have to find out from the owner, hey, whether this property has the owner, whether the owner already hold this property more than five, five years or not. If it is less than that, then cannot be transferred. So uh, these are the requirements. So when the new next purchaser buy the property, he has to make sure that he's going to hold it for five years lah, before he sell. All right, number three, 
the purchaser and spouse don't own any property in Selangor and Klang Valley. This is very important. Low cost property is for first home buyer. If the buyer already have one property on hand, okay, he cannot buy the next one. Okay, so uh, these are the requirements. And then last but not least, purchaser and spouse must stay or work in Selangor and Klang Valley. Lah. Okay, but more importantly is point number two and three. All right, so also to buy low cost property, right? That's a salary cap, your income cap. Do you know that? So for property range, these are the income bracket and property price. Lah. So for instance, if this property is 100,000 and below, the purchaser income, household income cannot be more than 5,000. Okay, if the property price between 100,000 to 250,000, the income cannot be more than 7,000. So 250 to 300,000 cannot be more than nine. If 300,000 and above the property price, the income cannot be 10. So I also come across some lender property, uh, three, 400,000 falls under low cost category. So it uh, has to be very careful. Uh, how to identify that, whether uh, this is low cost or not. Normally, this will mention is in the principal SPA. Principal SPA meaning the first SPA between the developer and the owner. If this property has already transferred a few times, we may not able to uh, find it out. Okay, then it's the lawyer's job to find it out. Uh whether this falls under low cost or not. Okay, but it says that the owner have the principal SPA will be great because it will be mentioned there, right? And for more information, you guys can go to that link, this link. Lah. Okay, this is different from Prima. This is different from Selangor Ku. What I'm sharing here is the old apartment that you have seen, okay, in the market now. The, the one that's about 10, 20 years uh, property. So, uh, as a purchaser, they have to meet this requirement before the transfer can be done. Okay, so uh, I hope that uh, everyone uh, learned something today, especially on title matters and also about consent. Okay, right. So let's see if there's any questions. So far, there's so many replies. Huh? Any, any questions? Uh, a few people actually shared. Actually, uh, hi Terence, KL Land Search can do online Selangor. Okay, yes, uh, Owen, thanks for asking this question. Uh, land Search can do uh, online now. Uh, normally, if an agent wants to do a land search, right, they have to go to the land office uh, to do the land search. But now, uh, if you guys have this apps called Easy Law, Easy Law actually offer this service. Uh, you can use Easy Law, E A S Y L A W, uh, that able to for you to do a land search. Okay, it's 30, 30 ringgit for a private search, uh, fifty ringgit for an officer search for uh, Selangor. Okay, Grand Mungkin kept by PTG and Grand Semarang kept by. Uh, Okay, uh Ikwan Gram Mungkim are uh, kept by uh the, the, the district. Okay, however, grant uh sorry, not, not grant sementara is hard millet sementara. Uh the daera one HSD is by the daera, meaning the PTG. And uh for HSM, it's um under the Mungkim, which is the district. Okay, uh your guess. Hi, Terence. What if owner refused to move out when requested or given compensation by the government? Because there has been cases other where they refused to move. Uh, as far as my concern, there's no choice. The, the residents have to move out. And uh, some place, places whereby the property price is a bit cheap, right? Uh, the government actually offer an upgrade for them. to They reallocate, but a bigger house, a new house. So it really depends. Uh, they may have dispute, of course, but uh, uh, they could be a court case also. Lah. That's, that's a bit complicated one in this situation. It's possible. 
uh, Cynthia can temporary title is Bumi, but later permanent title become non Bumi. Cynthia possible because uh, as far as I concern, uh, the the land office, uh, the information also quite messy one. I I I wouldn't I wouldn't surprise if there is an error. Okay, there is a lender property suddenly changed to low cost. What is the size declared as low cost? Tracy, actually very good uh, questions because as far as I understand, even in Subang, SS19, those compact house used to be not low cost, but suddenly uh, change it to low cost. Okay, so uh, it really depends on what is gazetted. Lah. Okay, if daddy low cost, then uh, as a residence, as an owner, have to appeal. Lah. Okay. Some rent say KL address is better than Selangor when pushing new project. How come? Ah? Uh, not really. I think KL address is because it's KL by name, but also there's a lot of factors to, to look into lah, uh, to answer C CTB more. Okay, can clarify if a Malay owner who owns a leasehold property is treated as Bumi lot? Malay seller seems to think that if they didn't buy a Bumi lot, the unit is not a Bumi lot. They buy a Bumi lot. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that some of the owners were concerned eh, buying leasehold property and it will become a boomy lot. Whether this is true or not, uh, get to find out because I also asked a few lawyers. Uh, for you, The lawyer's uh, answer is um, they have to find out whether this leasehold property, whether it's a boomy lot or non boomy lot based on the quota uh, during the purchase from the developer that time whether they already took the 7% uh, booming discount or not. Okay, so the answer is uh, have to identify whether this is a booming lot or non booming lot, although this is a leasehold. Okay. Can we have an example how to use easy law? Uh, actually, uh, John, you can download the apps. There's a step-by-step -step, uh, guidance on how to use it. Okay, there's FAQs and also video you can check out. Wow, there's a lot of questions are this for this session. Okay, said property belongs to three owner in title. When signing offer letter, how important is it for three parties to sign the OL? Especially if one owner is on board, only back to sign the SVN when it's ready. If the offer letter is signed by one, then later the other say no. Yes, thanks one click property. That is very, very important. Okay. When you go for listing appointment, make sure all the owners sign on the uh, letter of authorization. Not until when it comes to, oh, buyer already offer, you're already very excited, everyone already excited or can close deal, especially if a big deal. And then, mana tau, uh, other owners don't agree, then dialogue how, how to do. So it's very, very important even at the listings appointment time, you already know there's more, there's more than one owner. Make sure all, the, all of them in sign, okay? And also offer letter must sign by all the owners as well. Although uh, on whatever, whatever ways, make sure the offer letter is signed by all the owners, okay? Don't care like, whether they are at uh, OOC or, or whatever reasons, make sure they sign. Okay, otherwise we will get into trouble if the offer letter is not signed by all parties. How about title shows that Kekunuan Kampung means agriculture or to build Kampung there? Oh, okay, uh, Jake Kairi, I apologize. I don't think I can answer this because uh, Kegunaan Kampung is uh, very vague. I'm not too sure about that. Bumi Lok only can see from the SMP only, right? Uh, Ikwan, yes, correct. Uh, Bumi Lot. Is only can see in the SMP, especially on the uh, principal SMP. Lah. On title, you cannot see whether this is a boomy lot or non boomy lot. Some say low cost flat can be transacted before five years, just need to contract between buyers and vendor. Does this contract valid? Okay, uh, I think this is a pre, uh, a conditional contract. Lah. Of course, conditional contract uh, is not an SPA. So it uh, depends uh, how the lawyer drafted because it's not an SPA, okay? So if like legally transferred, legally transferred, meaning MOT is done, it has to be after five years. Hi, Terence, if title is agree, but premium is commercial rate, can buyer take it as this is a commercial or potential commercial title? 
but premium is commercial rate, can take it as a commercial or potential commercial. Uh, possible because I, uh, I came across this situation also that the owner is paying a, a commercial rate uh, quick rent. Uh, uh, however, uh, this one I would say is better that uh, we have the clear titles conversion already. Lah. Okay, I think it's still uh, quite premature to, to say that it's commercial title already. Okay. All right. Where is the max square feet meter at low cost in LPS? Subramanium. Sorry, um, I don't get it. Uh, uh, Jessica, hi Terrence, just check that entitled not stated Bumi lot, but it's Bumi lot. Usually, how to check this, please advise. Okay, whether uh, a Bumi lot or not Bumi lot, uh, it's important to identify whether there's a principal SPA is in place or you can ask the owner when they purchase uh, purchase the property uh, whether they have taken the Bumi discount. Okay, the owner will know. If the property is about many years, many years ago, uh, chances are transfer shouldn't be a problem uh, for Bumi, uh, for freehold property, but leasehold a bit tricky. Okay, that one, the the lawyer have to uh, do his due diligence. A lot of findings are uh, basically finding out from the, the very first owner. Is it possible for agriculture land to build a house? Technically, no. Okay, all right, I'll pass it back to uh, the host. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Terence. Uh, very technical session. Uh, of course, we, I, I think maybe there might be uh, one or uh, two questions uh, missed out. We, we, we do want to make sure that uh, our time span is uh, at least within one hour to one hour and 15 minutes. Uh, this one actually very good, this session. This session is the one with the most questions. Uh, I'm sure we appreciate uh, all your questions over here. And if uh, any questions are unattended to, uh, please... Uh, please do uh, leave it down and I'm very sure uh, the mentors and the leaders at your agencies also would be able to answer so. And all right, guys, thanks. Uh, so everyone is thanking you, Terence. There's so many thank yous for you over here. Okay, now that we are at the end of our session, uh, I want to make sure that if you all are still around, please do give us some feedback. Most of the time, we only got 10 or 20 feedback. So we need more feedback from you all to improve our sessions. Lah. Okay, so guys, please do scan, uh, drop us some feedback so that we can continuously uh, improve on our sessions. Lah. Of course, this session provided by Terence, as you can see, land titles is so much more than leasehold or just freehold. There is so much detail into it, uh, restrictions and rules. Okay, of course, Terence did not study it over a day. It was a continuous learning journey on and on and on until he can be teaching all of you over here. Okay, so uh, every one of you REN's or some of you that are not REN's joining in as guests, I hope this session is as informative as it is. Please remember to stay tuned with us. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., we got another very good session. We are re-inviting James from Rain and Horn and he will be sharing his session with us lah, Okay, from a valuer's viewpoint. So I think as negotiators, to get a valuer's viewpoint, uh, that uh, that information is uh, not easy to obtain. Okay, so everyone keep the energy level up. 24 hours from now, we will be seeing you here again. We are very humbled that you all make your time here for us today. And we are very happy to share our energy here today. Okay, so before we end, let me just transmit my energy out. Everybody feel good about it. Okay. And please enjoy your day. Have a, good, uh, have a good dinner. Have a good session with your family and friends. Keep the energy level up. Don't be demotivated. If all 200 of us can pass out the positive energy, that will make a 
big group of 2,000 plus REN all feel the same energy. Okay, so cheers everyone. Good evening. Stay tuned. See you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thank you very much.